We've covered a lot of ground, but now we're going to have a look at some of the common faults that you'll see amongst your students, um, or ones that you may potentially be doing yourself but didn't realize you were doing. We're going to go through all the common faults and see if we can correct them. So the first common fault that we're going to address is any structural or mechanical faults that the student is performing. So if you feel that they're not being able to do the pull-up correctly, it's usually down to the technique. And we've gone through many videos of technique and we've covered a lot of those issues. But the first thing you always want to make sure that you're looking at is are they doing the actual technique correct? And go through a mental checklist of all the little bits that we've covered. Now, one of the issues here is it is actually a little bit difficult sometimes to identify if there is actually a mechanical fault, so the student actually just is doing it wrong, or occasionally you also want to think about unique anatomy. So you're going to find that a lot of different students are actually structurally built differently, and their skeletal system, their muscular system uh, is different from other people's. So when we talk about unique anatomy, what we're, what we're saying is every single person is different in many, many ways. So everybody has strengths, everybody has weaknesses, but on top of that, actually anatomically, they are different, they're built different. And you know, everybody is different heights, different sizes, different shapes, um, but also kind of down to joint orientations and bone lengths. Um, lever lengths, so kind of the, the lever that you are using when you are doing a pull-up or whatever exercise it is. Um, their posture may be differently because their hips are designed differently. Um, they have different mass, they have different mobility, different flexibility. Uh, they might have had previous injuries that you don't know about that is causing them problems uh, to do the particular thing you're asking them to do. All it means is you need to, as the coach or for yourself, figure out whether they're doing it wrong because um, they're anatomically not being able to do it in, you know, their body is stopping them from being able to do it the way that you think it should be done, or is it that they're just doing it wrong because they don't understand how to do it wrong? And these are one of the things that you need to clarify. As an example of the joint orientation and bone lengths and whatnot, um, you might find that, for instance, one student, when they have their hand on the bar, their elbows are going to bend forward. So, so as they pull up, their elbows are going to be tucked in here. They might still be using the correct muscle groups. The lats are still being used and the long head of the bicep is still being used. They're still doing it correctly, but their arms are going to be here. And it is just because that is the, the way that their shoulder joint is orientated a little bit more to make their arms do that. Others might have their elbows out to the side, but also they're doing the same thing. They're using the correct muscles, the, 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 the way that their bones are orientated, everything is in line and it's not causing them any issues. And you need to be aware of that. You need to understand that di different people are built differently. They should all be able to do the exercise. It just means that you have to compensate here and there a little bit to see whether it, you're causing them discomfort by trying to force them to do a particular way, but their body is not built that way. Having correct technique, and that means we're looking at things like full range of motion and we're using the correct muscle groups, that everybody can do. But how they do it in terms of where the angle of their joints are and things like that, as long as there's no shearing on the joints and everything feels fine, everybody should be able to do the full range. Everybody should be able to do it in the correct way with the correct muscle groups. Now, especially when you're trying to do this yourself and you're trying to figure out, is my body doing the right thing? Am I really going to the full range of motion? One of the tools that is a brilliant thing to use nowadays, and it's very, very easy to do, is to film yourself. Everybody nowadays carries a camera on their phone, 
and I would highly recommend filming yourself and then being able to play it back. Looking at the faults and being able to see where you're going wrong yourself there and then is a perfect way of trying to figure out how to fix what is going on and actually just being aware of those issues. The old school method would be to have a mirror. The problem with the mirror I find is that your focus is on looking at the fault while you're actually supposed to be performing and that can kind of change your focus. I prefer filming it and recording yourself to see exactly what is going on and then you can determine if there's any fixes need to be made. The second common fault that we're going to have a talk about very briefly is the full range of motion. Now you've heard me bang on about this so many times through all the videos and it is because it is super important. Full range of motion, we know what this means now, it means that you should go from the absolute bottom to the absolute top. Now one of the things uh, that I have seen before and even myself is that the worst position for you to start in, the w absolute worst student to have is an experienced practitioner who has been doing it wrong. And the reason is because they're not starting from zero, they actually have to revert back to zero first. Now, if so I see this a lot in my classes, is somebody is able to do pull-ups and they think that they can do pull-ups well and they can do a lot of them. But the problem is that they have been cheating themselves this whole time because they don't actually do full range of motion and they've not always gone to the absolute bottom and they don't rarely go to the very top. And unfortunately, what this means is they now have to relearn how to do the pull-up properly and they will very often than not revert back to the previous way that they were doing it. So if they were given a set of 10, maybe for the first two or three, they'll try to do it, you know, the full range if I ask them to, but they won't be able to keep it going and they'll revert back to the way that they were doing it previously. And it is very hard for you to move back before you can move forward again. And it takes a lot of time to kind of train it out of your system before you can get to that zero point where you're starting again. Now what that means is it can be done, you can revert back, do the proper technique and start again and kind of move forwards. Um, but you want to be aware that you don't want to put your students in that position and you don't want to put yourself in that position. You don't want to cheat yourself at the beginning or your students at the beginning and let them get away with doing substandard pull-ups because all it means is later on down the line, they're going to have to unlearn it and it's going to be harder and it's going to be tougher to do. You might as well start off slow, do it properly from day one and get used to doing the full range of motion and the correct technique all the time. If you don't, it will come back and bite you in the bite you in the butt because it just means that you're going to have to unlearn that all again. Also, you know that we've spoken about this before that cheating the the range of motion is just going to make you weaker. You are just saying that you are weaker at that bottom part and you're weaker at that top part, and that's all it's saying. And it that therefore makes you less able and less functional. So. It's much better to start from day one and get it right from day one, do the full range of motion and make that gradual increase from that position rather than doing it badly and then realizing down the line that it's going to hold you back and you have to go all the way back to zero to start again. From a coaching perspective of this, you need to call your students out on it. If they are uh, trying to cut corners, they're trying to cheat themselves essentially, then it's up to you as a coach, if you are coaching other people, you need to call them on it every single time. 
and become very vigilant at spotting, especially that bottom part. That bottom part is usually the one that is a little bit more subtle and a little bit more trickier to spot, but you can see whether people are under tension or not. And you need to be able to you know, tell your students, nope, that one doesn't count. You didn't go the full range of motion. Let's try and get everything correct before we do more. Common fault number three is using the wrong muscle groups. So again, I see this in students again sometimes where they're using their biceps a lot more than they're using the lats. So we went through this in the biomechanics stage, but I see a lot that the students are trying to bring their arm down like this. So when they're on the bar, it's all bicep based and they're not using the lats at all. And we need to start to get them to understand what muscle groups to use, okay? So from here, essentially what I see is that, and it becomes very hard, rather than coming up with the lats, okay? So you want to be using the lats a lot more. So when we're talking about using the wrong muscle groups, that is also using momentum, which will cause you to use the wrong muscle groups as well. So when you're swinging and using momentum, again, you're not increasing your strength. You're, you're, it's a form of cheating again, okay? Um, so using momentum and kipping is just, it will help you get up, but the point is not to get up, the point is to get stronger. So if you are needing momentum, then it, it, there's no point in doing it. If, this, if the point of the training is to get stronger, then don't bother uh, swinging or putting momentum in, okay? And again, you can see this when um, your students jump on because uh, instead of starting underneath and starting from a dead hang like that, what you'll see is they'll step back behind the bar and when they'll, they'll be like this little jump onto the bar that allows them to swing forward and then on the return, it helps them uh, pull up. So from here, they'd st stay back here they grab, back, and then up. And it becomes a lot easier because there's that swing forward and back. So the way to combat that, again, is just to have a two second count at the bottom or a one second count at the bottom for your students or for you. You just tell them they have to get on, hold, one, two, and then they have to pull, okay? So you put the dead hang at the bottom. There's no way they can swing first. Um, and it just allows, stops them from doing it. Or you could do it where you're in front of a wall. And again, the wall is going to stop them from swinging. It's not going to help. 